Hello and welcome to the Mac Video Training blog. This is a screencast that I'm going to shoot. Now I just want to say off the top, this is not the regular quality of our training videos. For the most part, I'm not going to do a whole lot of editing here. I'm just going to basically shoot and speak. The purpose of this video is to show you an Apple TV running Leopard and booting from a USB drive. So the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to get inside of the Apple TV and change any configuration or alter the drive in any way or open the Apple TV up not to void the warranty. Now if you're going to do this, you must take full responsibility for anything that happens, or any damage that you might cause to your Apple TV. I for one own several Leopard licenses that I'm not using and the Apple TV in nature is an Apple product, so by running the uh, Leopard software on it, I'm hoping that I'm not uh, violating anything, and I'm actually not altering the internal drive in any way. Kind of an experiment. Now the reason I'm running an Apple TV with Leopard is because I want to use this Apple TV as an iTunes server. The previous machine that I was using was an eMac, and an older eMac, being that it's a CRT screen, it uses up a lot of energy, creates a tremendous amount of heat, and I have it in a very small enclosed area. And it also creates a lot of fan noise. So I'm, I've replaced this eMac as my iTunes server with an Apple TV running Leopard off of a USB drive. The purpose of running an iTunes server is merely to have a static machine that stays at home, that's always running, that's always on, so that your other Apple TVs or your other computers in the home can access a library of music, videos, or what have you. And as I have two Apple TVs, one attached to my living room TV downstairs and one attached to my bedroom TV upstairs, this enables me to have one common iTunes library that I manage remotely using screen sharing, and then I can put all my videos and all my music, and then be able to send that library to the Apple TVs. So it really reduces a lot of the management associated with having two Apple TVs. Now interestingly enough, when I go to my network, you'll see here I have a bunch of stuff on my network. There's my Airport Extreme, and you can see it looks like an Airport Extreme. <laughs> and here is my Apple TV now. For something that isn't really supposed to run an operating system and show up on a network, period, it's kind of funny that Apple's built a little icon around it. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So let's start the screen sharing. And there we go. So now we are screen sharing over wireless. You can see I have my wireless network here. And so this will be a little bit laggy, but screen sharing within Leopard is pretty amazing. And the reason I wanted to run Leopard on the Apple TV is because of the screen sharing that's built into it. Let's quickly talk about that. So if I go to the Apple TV system preferences, and if I go to sharing, you can see here that I have screen sharing, file sharing, and remote login if I ever need that. So these are things that you've got to turn on in your Apple TV when you're building it up. And if you stumbled on this video somewhere else other than our blog, then you can visit our blog at macvideotraining.com forward slash blog and look under the Apple TV category. All right, a couple other things while we're here I just want to show you is the energy saver. A good idea is to make everything not to turn off, including display, because I do not have a display connected to it, so it doesn't need to turn off, and I'm not even putting my hard drives to sleep. I did notice that when I had even the display turned to go off, that it didn't always want to wake up properly, and so I've sort of eliminated that as a possibility for it not waking up or not being able to access it via screen sharing. Uh, a couple other things. A couple other things of interest. As far as screensavers go, again, we do not have any screen attached to it, so this isn't necessary. And there's really no audio necessary or any audio settings, um, although this, I believe this particular build of Leopard that I have will support the analog audio out. Uh, it doesn't work over HDMI. I'm not sure about the digital out, but as far as audio goes, I'm not really concerned about it because I'm strictly using this as an iTunes server. And you can see here that I have iTunes loaded up. Now what I've done is I have this video drive, and this video drive is actually connected. So if you look at my K-Zone here, it's connected. So this is the drive that is connected to my Airport Extreme. I've split it up into two. It's a terabyte drive. One's for backups, so 500 gigs is for backups, and 500 gigs is for video. Now what I've also done is I've placed the iTunes library on this video drive so that I can essentially make it portable. So if I decided I didn't want to use the Apple TV as my iTunes server, I could just use literally any other computer, point it to the iTunes library 
on this video drive and I'm pretty much back up to speed almost immediately. And all these videos live on this video drive and the drive is connected to my Airport Extreme via USB and that Airport Extreme is connected directly via Ethernet to the Apple TV. So it's a fairly quick connection. Alright, uh, another thing that I do use this for is I do use it for a webcam that I have. Now it's nighttime here so you can't really see what's going on but there's a webcam connected outside that is directed towards a pool and I use this particular software. It sends motion detection notifications to my iPhone via a program called iCam and again you can find a little review on our website at macvideotraining.com forward slash blog and just look for iCam. It's an absolutely amazing program for about six dollars. I have four cameras set up in my home uh, all capable of motion detection and push notification that send video feeds to my iPhone in real time uh, even over 3G and even over Edge so it's pretty amazing. And lastly I sometimes run my transmission torrents when I'm downloading torrents, TV shows and different things here. Let's quickly just sort of launch Safari take a look at that just to give you an idea of the speed. Now it's pretty good and I'll show you the system profile in a bit so you get an idea of what's inside of this Apple TV. So let's just load up another page really quickly. You can see here it's really not that bad. I mean compared to the eMac that I was using before it's much more responsive. And don't forget this is over screen sharing so there is a bit of a lag. Let's take a look at the about this Mac section and you can see here we have a slightly hacked version and if you're wondering where I got this version of Leopard um, there's an easy way and a hard way to build a Leopard build for the Apple TV and the easy way is located on the blog at macvideotraining.com forward slash blog and you can find the text instructions on how to do that. Now I don't fully explain it um, but I do link to a lot of different websites that I found very useful in doing this. So this is a 1 gigahertz unknown processor there again, much faster than the eMac I had. 256 megs of RAM, so there's a, it's a little bit low for Leopard, but what I've done is I've turned different things off using the Onx program to shut down things that I really don't need. Things like dashboard and a lot of the animations that are going on in Leopard that you really don't need for a server. Let's take a look at some more information. One thing I found very interesting was the RAM situation in here. Even though it's 256 megs of RAM, there's an empty bank, so I guess one could probably take this apart and add RAM, but you know what, for my intents and purposes, it's running perfectly fine, and I'm very happy with how this is running. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video on how to run Leopard from a USB drive on an Apple TV. Thanks.